We left off at the V3.4 or verification 3.4, which is cookie based session management in the previous video. So we're talking about the application security verification standard from OWASP over here. Now, this is the version from October 2021. So let's move on. I'm doing this from the perspective and you might want to um, ignore the weird sound if if the sound or the microphone is weird it is about it, it is because the setting uh, of i the setting that i'm currently in but you should ignore that because the point is that the sound has to be decent and i want to get this video through now i'm talking about or i'm uh, dealing with this from the perspective of a penetration tester and also of someone who's in the sort of like application management field and they need to be aware of what exactly they have to conform to when it comes to the security of their application so v3.4 cookie based session management you should verify so 341 that cookie based session tokens have the secure attribute set that is for all three levels of uh, verification l1 l2 l3 now again l1 and l2 are for generic applications while l3 mostly or broadly speaking for generic applications while l3 is for applications that deal with uh, more sensitive information or applications that are highly sensitive such as banking applications health applications and so on and so forth now 3.4.2 verify that cookie based session tokens have the http only attribute so we need to have the secure attribute and http only attribute now if you're a penetration tester and on the applications that you're uh, testing you notice that these two flags or attribute sets are missing you should definitely fill that up in the report verify that cookie based session tokens utilize the same set attribute to limit exposure to cross site request forgery attacks so csrf attacks so not only secure http only but also same site verify that cookie based session tokens use the host prefix so that cookies are only sent to the host that initially set the cookie. So this is really important because you do not want uh, the cookies to be sent to other hosts, to hosts other than the initial one who set the cookie. 3.4.5, verify that if the application is published under a domain name with uh, with what did I do here? All right. Verify that if the application is published or under a domain name with other applications that set or use session cookie that might disclose the session cookies, set the path at the path attribute in cookie based session tokens using the most precise path possible. So in this situation, if uh, the application is published under a certain domain name with other applications, you need to be very specific when it comes to the, uh, the path attribute. And you need to use the most precise path possible. Now, you or the application that you're testing. V3.5, verification 3.5, token-based session management. Now, token-based session management, we're talking about JSON web tokens, OAuth, SAML, and API keys. API keys are known to be weak and should not be used in new code. Let me actually highlight the importance of this in red. So, verifications, and notice that L1 is absent here. Verify that application allows user, which actually means 
that we might not be able to test this unless we have um, access to the code. Verify that applications allows uh, application allows users to revoke OAuth tokens that form trust relationship with linked applications. So it's really important not only to grant OAuth token, but also revoke. Users should be able to revoke the tokens that form trust relationships with linked applications. Verify that application uses session tokens rather than static API secrets and keys, except with legacy implementations. Verify that stateless session tokens use digital signatures, encryption, and other countermeasures to protect against tampering, enveloping, replay, null cipher, and key substitution attacks. This is not possible unless or is most likely not possible unless you have access to the code itself so this is more like a gray or white box approach not a black box approach federated reauthentication this is as you can see l1 and l2 are missing here so l1 and l2 are missing Verify that relying parties speci specify the maximum authentication time to credential service providers and that CSPs re-authenticate the user if they haven't used the session within that period. This is very specific. Again, I'm doing the same mistake um, by moving the uh, this uh, bar on the right with my hand. So bear with me here. This is not possible unless you have access to the code and you conduct source code review. Verify that credential service CSP providers credential service. So not only content security providers, but credential service providers CSPs. So the same ab abbreviation for different things. Inform relying parties of the last authentication event to allow relying parties to determine if they need to re-authenticate the user. So I'm seeing this as a good practice in some of the applications that I'm testing, that every once in a while there is a um, request. So I'm seeing this in Burp Suite. There is a request to allow actually a relying party to determine if they need to re-authenticate the user. So every once in a while, I see a refresh token being used and new session tokens being provided to the user. So every once in a while, depending on the time that um, it has previously preset to check whether or not, or to check if the user is there, Every once in a while, a refresh token and a new token is issued. Defenses against session management exploits. All right, there are a small number of session management attacks, some related to the user experience of sessions previously based, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. I'm not going to, as a matter of fact, let me actually do. In early 2018, let me actually do read this. Several financial institutions were compromised using what the attackers called half-open attacks. This term has stuck in the industry. The attackers struck multiple institutions with different proprietary code bases and indeed it seems different code bases within the same institutions. The half-open attack is exploiting a design pattern flaw commonly found in many existing authentication, session management and access control systems. So really important. These have been existing. 
Attackers start a half-open attack by attempting to, to lock, reset, or recover a credential. That's how, that's how they initiated. A popular session management design pattern reuses user profile session object models between unauthenticated, half-authenticated, and fully authenticated code. This design pattern populates a valid session object or token containing the victims' profile, including password hashes and roles. So if access control checks does not correctly verify that the user is fully logged in, the attacker will be able to act as the user. Very important. Attacks could include changing the user's password, updating the email to perform a valid password reset, disabling MFA or enrolling a new MFA device, revealing or changing API keys, and so on and so forth. Now, verify that application ensures a fully valid login session reauthentication or secondary verification before allowing any sensitive transaction or account modification. So this often happens in, for example, banking applications. And as you see, as you can see here, all these um, three levels, L1, L2, L3, are checked. This often happens in applications that deal with very sensitive information, like a banking application. So even though the user is logged in, a measure of good practice that I often see is that if the user, if the user has to conduct or if the user wants to make a transaction, they will need to require Reauthentication, even though they are logged in. And in some situations, it's not the best thing that you have a browser that actually saves your password. But uh, you should actually, if you want to be very, very protected, so to speak, as an application creator, you would actually have the user issue or have them use their multi-factor authentication or have them send an SMS to actually revalidate their session. So again, even though the user is fully is authenticated or fully authenticated, you should re-authenticate or use a secondary verification before allowing the user to actually make a transaction or an account modification. That being said, we have the references here. Again, the references point to OWASP. This one, not really for a word, points to. And next, we're going to tackle access control, which I'm really excited about.